In this video, we are going to push a data table from a CSV file to an MS SQL database table. This table need not exist in the database beforehand. If it doesn't exist, we'll create it and then we'll append to it. And if it does exist, we'll simply append to it. Now we move to the Javelin canvas and before we talk about the mechanics of the flow, I'd like to talk briefly about the variables pane. And so the variables pane can be accessed by clicking here. And what we have here now is a number of variables that can be accessed by these actions on the Javelin palette. And so the user defines these and you give them a name, you give them a type, and it can be any .NET framework type. You give them a scope and you give them a value. And there are a number of uh, variables in this particular flow that need to be defined by the user. And so the first variable is the file path variable, and this is the path to our CSV file. The next variable is the name of our server, our SQL server. And so you need to input the value there. And then the third one is the database name. So this is the name of our database. You also need to give this table you're creating a name. And so you define that here as well. And so moving on, oops. So here's our Javelin flow, and at a high level, you'll notice that there are essentially three steps required in order to create our table in SQL and then push the CSV file to the table. And the first step is this one here. And what this does is this formats a SQL statement to create a table based on the column titles in our CSV file. The second action is a SQL query, and this queries our database with this create table statement that we've just formatted it in this action. And the third one is where we append our CSV file to the table. If we move back to the first action, uh, this is actually a subflow within our flow, and so we can double click this, and we move to the first action within the subflow. And this is a file activity action. And what this does is it reads all the text in our CSV file and passes it to a string. And then what we do is we split this string into an array based on a new line delimiter. And then we take the first uh, element in our array, which is the column names, and we pass that to a string. And then we then chop this string up into each individual column name. We then pass this to this while loop here, which does a bit more formatting for SQL. And then we concatenate our array into a single string, add a little bit more formatting, and then now we've got our SQL statement. Moving on to our SQL query, you'll notice that using variables, we have defined uh, a number of fields here. So for, we've given the server where our database is located. We've then given the database name in that server. We've got the username that's got access to that database we've also given the passwords in the properties pane here for that username we've given it the query of course and also as well we've defined uh, this boolean value here the continue on error uh, field to be true and we'll speak a little bit more about why we've done this later on if we enter the scope of this append to table subflow you'll see that the first action is an import CSV to data table action. And what this is doing is it's reading our CSV into the data table. And by default, the top row of the CSV is ignored. Uh, we then convert our data table to, into an iData reader object. And then the final step is to push our iData reader object to the table using this SQL bulk copy action. And by using an iData reader object to do this, we don't have to load in memory. And so now we are in a position to run our flow, but before we do so, I'd like to bring up SQL Server Management Studio, and I'm going to query our AdventureWorks database. So this is the one used in the Javelin flow, and we're gonna use this select statement and look for this test cases table, and you'll see that this table doesn't exist in the database. And so we run our flow, and if we go back to our Management Studio, and query again we'll see that we've now created the table in the database and so what i like to do is run the flow again and so in this instance now what we're trying to do is we're trying to append to that table because of course the table already exists and so we run the flow again and everything runs but if we look in the log here you'll see that we've had an error uh, that's been thrown here an exception and this occurs when we use this action and the exception is that there is already an object named test cases in the database, of course. 
However, usually what would happen now is Javelin would quit, given that it'd thrown this error. But what I've done is I've set this continue on error property here to true. And what that means is even though the uh, create table query fails, the flow moves on to the next action, which is this append to table action. And so if we go into our SMS, SSMS and execute our state uh, query again, we'll see that we have in fact appended to the table, even though our query failed. And so that's why we set this continue on error property to true. And so what I'd like to talk about now is how we would change this flow if we were appending to a different database type. So in this case, we're appending to a SQL table, but what if we're appending to say an Oracle DB2 table, something like that, what do you have to change? Well, this subflow here would change depending on which database type it was, because of course, what we're doing here is formatting a create table statement. And if that statement is different in a different database type, then you'll have to change how the formatting works here. And the second action will change as well, because here we're using a SQL query action, whereas for something like, say, Oracle, you'd have to use the Oracle query. For DB2, you'd have to use the DB2 query. And there are slight differences in how you do these queries, so, and there's slightly different uh, the fields you've got to fill out on the widget, like here where we filled out the server name, the database name, etc. They are slightly different for DB2 and Oracle. So in the case of Oracle, we need to specify a port, for instance, whereas we don't here. And the final action will change a little bit, but not so much. So these first two uh, actions will remain the same, I think. But this final one here is a SQL bulk copy action. So this is uh, used to push data into a SQL table, but if it's Oracle, you need to use the uh, Oracle bulk copy action. If it was DB2, you'd need to use the DB2 action. Uh, after that, I think everything else would remain the same.